Okay, get up, Endeavor. We got work to do. Okay, Carl. We got two of the dwarfs in particular. Got a long day ahead of them. <laughs> yeah, they sure do. Endeavor, this is Houston. Are you ready to begin the event? We're ready to begin the event. NHK, this is Houston. Please call Endeavor for a voice check. Endeavor, this is NHK. How do you hear me? NHK, this is Endeavor. You are loud and clear. Good afternoon, Commander Zafi. Wakata-san. Hello. Konnichiwa. Mr. Wakata. We see Mr. Wakata uh, waving hand uh, uh, to us with the uh, card called uh, Earth. Now let's talk to uh, talk to uh, Commander Commander Duffy. Congratulations for your smooth operations of various tasks. Yes, she's saying uh, con congratulations. Uh, we are performing a very good. Uh, we are achieving the mission tasks successfully so far. Uh, thank you very much uh, for coming aboard Endeavour with us today. Uh, right now we're uh, approaching uh, South America. We're just passing over the Galapagos Islands. And um, thank you for your congratulations. We're having a wonderful time on our mission. According to the commander, Everything is going uh, smoothly, and they are enjoying the flights. Mr. Mori, Mr. Wakata, hello. Hello. 
We are looking at you from the earth. You are doing a wonderful job. Uh, we are in Houston. We are all impressed uh, by Koichi's wonderful work. They are very happy with your work, all my colleagues done in Houston. Thank you very much. I am very happy that everything has gone on very well uh, so far. Unfortunately, uh, Commander has to explain, uh, uh, excuse himself because of EVAs that are about to start. Thank you for appearance, Mr. Duffy. Well, now, sixth graders of the Japanese school in Houston are here with me. They seem to have questions, they, many questions they want to ask you directly. Here they are. First, first of all, Okochi, you are. You said something like the uh, the earth covered with a uh, blue veil looked something. I saw you saying that on TV, but I couldn't hear you very well. Well, the blue veil that I was referring to was the uh, thin atmosphere. And there was a big contrast between the black space and a beautiful blue earth and I really truly felt that the earth was alive. Let's continue our questions. What about Igarashi? The moment, uh, uh, the, moment uh, the uh, rocket uh, went up uh, into uh, space, whose voice and whose face uh, came up to you first? At the moment of uh, launch, uh, it takes a lot of uh, attention, and uh, I was uh, I was around here at the time of the launch. I was very um, concentrating on the monitors of the instrumental instruments and so forth. So I couldn't imagine any of uh, uh, any of the, anybody's face. Endeavor, we have the flight deck view. Endeavor, Houston, we're on the aft flight deck with you. Copy that. I see you've got the uh, PDAP there. You can install the PDAP on the starboard bay for latch plate. Very much that. Uh, they'll be done. 
And Winston, then install and remove an avionics uh, line from that TA line clamp. Okay, and that will be in work after the, uh, the burn. Then this configuration of the APFR, and I'm going to do three clockwise on the z bolt. One, two, three. Endeavor, okay, Houston, those, uh, we're two uh, minutes from the ZOE. Down. We'll get you back in approximately seven minutes for the flight deck. Your go for the SM checkpoint at the end of 14-7 cabin repress. And for IV and EV, the plan right now is for Leroy to proceed as planned on the timeline. For EV3, we're going to give you some easy tasks following your utility box so you both meet up at PWP setup. That's the plan for now. Copy. Okay, we copy that, Tom, uh, and uh, we'll just stand by to hear which easy task you want them to, to do. Good copy. See you on the other side. Okay, Dan, uh, next step is Pedro, I think. Yeah, uh, for Leroy, you got to uh, temp stow the torque wrench at the work site, and then you have your quick grabs from the APFR. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. We wouldn't want you to forget those, sir. No. And, uh, Winston, you're uh, working on the food lines? Uh, I've got one connected already. Uh, go right ahead. Okay, I've reconnected one of the uh, lower fluid lying on Bellico to the primary box. The uh, reconnection, uh, the uh, memory force in the line was not a problem. The uh, clamp that clamps it down, is, again, is just difficult to actuate with one hand. The uh, thermal blankets are very difficult to put back into place. If you put the blankets in place prior to reclamping it, then you can't see how to reclamp it. If you reclamp it first, you don't have enough clearance to... Uh, easily reconfigure the thermal blankets. So again, these thermal blankets are a big problem. They need to be uh, to redone, be redone. I've got the grounding strap back in place uh, underneath a little spring clip. It uh, looks like a generally flimsy mechanism. Uh, I, I know it held on asset. But again, the problem is that it's just too small. We're working with a very small wire and a very small connector and a very small spring clamp. And items that, that, of that size are very difficult, as you know, to work with in these gloves. So uh, that's my comment on this, this first line. I'll go in and reconfigure the second line and finish this task up. Okay, and uh, let me just read the uh, steps to make sure we got them all. I uh, okay. appreciate those comments, by the way. Uh, we reconfigured the thermal blankets. Yeah. Stowed in the Teflon clip. That's affirmed. Reclamped the two individual line clamps and verified locks on, on the one that you did. The two individual line clamps, you confuse me. I've got the uh, connector back into its clamp in the primary box. Right, but there's a, a line clamp on the... Uh, you don't see a line clamp on the two lower fluid uh, connectors? Uh, only Teflon clips. But the two heads, the uh, connectors are clamped, and there is a single Teflon clip for the lower one. Yeah, but Winston, look uh, forward to those Teflon clips, and I think you'll find a line clip uh, forward to the Teflon clips. Okay, let me take a better look here. And Dan, as a current, um, in the dark with the spotlight on, the helmet on, I got my left spotlight on, the ECC is much more readable. I still think the font size is too small, and the paper cup checklist is superior in readability for contrast and size of the font. That's a great eval, uh, Leroy. I, I think it's terrific that one guy was able to see uh, and evaluate it uh, in the light and in the dark. Uh, I agree. Of course, the same amount of time. I think you gave them an outstanding eval. Great. Uh, any more on the ECC? Yes, we need you to comment on any system mobility caused by the ECC. Well, as you can see, it's difficult to reach my helmet perch valve. So if I could cut the size down, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, I can't swing it out of the way. As you see, it's kind of loose on my arm. Uh, it should have been a little tighter, I guess, but... I didn't want it to be too tight so I could swing it out of the way in case I needed to. Okay, good. Thanks for the feedback. And uh, that, that completes uh, that section. And we're going to now uh, go out of EVA, load the valve, and on to the uh, on-orbit installed uh, slide wire. Okay. And your first step there is to obtain the slide wire carrier from the forward bulkhead. Okay. And Leroy, just as you know, a heads up, uh, that was scheduled at a PET of 205, and we're at about 230 right now, so about okay. 25 minutes back. Okay, and Dan, uh, I'm looking at the PDAP now in the dark. I can see the green light on. 
I think it's just so dim in the direct sunlight that you can't see it. It has a great idea to recheck it, Leroy, and uh, I'm sure those folks would, would like it uh, evaluated. Maybe you could just stay there a second to be sure that it's solid red for 20 to 30 seconds and then solid green. That would be the standby. Uh, but it just, it's been in standby for a while, so it's solid green now. Okay, yeah, you're right. It's only solid red for 20 to 30 seconds. Good call. Okay, thanks for rechecking that, and you can move on to obtain the slide wire carrier from the forward bulkhead. Okay, roger that. Okay, Dan, on the lines again, I think maybe we're, we're maybe I'm using the wrong terminology. The two, in it, the two fluid line jumpers on the bottom, each of the heads have connectors that they go on. A line clamp, I guess you want to call them, and a Teflon clamp in the center. So I've got the lower one done, and I'm going to do the upper one now. Okay, uh, perform the following for the task plate. The first steps are going to be a quick grab, which is three times both hands to space. Three times both hands to space. Here we go. One. Two. And three. Three okay. times left hand to space. One. Two. And three. Okay, layback maneuver. Three times single layback, no hands. Max. Okay, that's one. PWP assembly to give priority to the thermal evaluation. Uh, Leroy may want to do the photo documentation of the utility box. Okay, sorry. Uh, we'll go ahead. And do that. We'll go ahead and do that. Do you want Winston to move uh, to the thermal valve position now? PWP assembly. Okay, we're going to go ahead with that. And uh, using the, uh, my understanding is we should leave the primary box uh, door open uh, in anticipation of taking the photograph uh, during sun during sun up. That'd be great. Okay, Leroy, thanks. That's good information. How are your helmet lights for the task, wide beam and narrow beam? Great. I tried uh, some combinations of both, and uh, you know, for close-in task, the spot beam was good, and for overall, the uh, the wide beam was good. So I understand you give those both A's? Both A's. Do you have a letter for the overall task in the utility box? Uh, give it a B. Okay. Uh, it's time to remove uh, push lock tool from the rigid tether and attempt to work site. Okay. It worked. Okay, Winston, I've got your slide wire wrapped around the path of post. That's your old spin dress aid. All right. That's your old spin dress aid. Okay, my old spin dress aid. Thanks. Never a minute and a half to a tinder's handover. The first seven minutes on east will be in blockage. You have the cameras. Okay, sorry, we copy that. Endeavor, we can take the cameras again. 
Okay, sorry, they're all yours. Thank you. Hey. Well, my BRT is going to go back here anyway. Copy a thermal comfort of a six. That's correct. Hey, Leroy, uh, I can't quite see you all the way over there on the bulkhead, but I'll read through you, uh, to read you through the steps. Through the slide wire link and it's cab and attached to fitting straps. That's two of them. And you can stow through the other two straps if time permits. And it appears that it's, uh, you do have some time to do that. Roger. You will then uh, uh, retract the cable slack and uh, go over uh, above the airlock uh, in preparation for uh, stowing. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, once you've ingressed your lock, uh, you can both set your waters to off. Water's off. Immediately, water's off. Okay, uh, you can close the thermal cover. Uh, you are go for closing locking the outer hatch. They're going to close and lock the outer hatch. 